Okay, so let's proceed. So having looked at, um, sorry, having looked at the structure of water and also how it influences the um, structure of bowel molecules, we can go ahead and look at uh, the chemical aspect. So we can go ahead and look at the chemical aspect. So the chemical aspect really has to do with the um, auto ionization of water. So the ability of water to ionize, though it is slightly, um, is of central importance for life. So we're saying water does ionize, but not so much. So it's capable of acting both as an acid and as a base. Um, and therefore, this ability to behave as an acid and, and, and also at the same time as a base is very central to actually, um, you know, its ability also to uh, solubilize substances. So its ionization can be represented as shown there. So two water molecules will combine and auto ionize to form the hydronium ion and also the hydroxide ion. Uh, sometimes uh, this ionization is represented just as a one-way thing like water, uh, water, one water molecule ionizes to form um, to form the hydrogen ion and the hydroxyl ion. Okay. So someone is saying the audio has a problem. Can you get me? I'm talking alone. Just write me a text on the chat if you can hear me so that I can proceed, because I've just seen there's a, there's a message here that someone can't hear me. Okay, all right, thank you. So if you can get me, then that's good. So let's proceed. Thank you for that response. Okay, so I was saying that sometimes we can represent this um, auto ionization as just one water molecule, um, uh, you know, ionizing to form the hydrogen ion and also the hydroxyl ion. Okay, so thank you for those responses. We move on. So uh, from, from our first year chemistry, we did come across um, what we're calling, uh, you know, equilibrium constants. Um, we also dealt with uh, uh, solubility constants and uh, all that nonsense, which is very good. I'm sure we can relate to what we have put here. So we can write the equilibrium constant for the auto ionization of water. And we do know that um, the equilibrium constant is basically the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. So here we have the concentration of the uh, products. In this case, uh, the, this should be the hydronium ion and the hydroxyl ion divided by two water molecules. And basically this is at 25 degrees Celsius. So we are saying that at this temperature, about two of every 109 molecules in pure water are ionized at any instant. Now, when you look at two out of uh, 109, 
uh, it means that uh, you know it shows you the the degree of ionization of this water it's very very minimal okay so the equilibrium constant can be written like that now in pure water which is deionized water or distilled water at 25 degrees celsius the concentration of water is 55.5 molar now this is obtained by you know a simple uh, calculation from the molecular mass of water and uh, uh, you know uh, how many of these water molecules are there so it's 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 a simple calculation but you don't really have to know how that is obtained um, what is important is that you understand that the concentration of water at 25 degrees Celsius is 55.5 molar. So we can substitute in our equilibrium uh, uh, reaction um, the concentration of water, which is the denominator there. So we can say the K equilibrium um, is equal to the concentration of hydrogen ion. Uh, times the concentration of hydroxyl ion divided by the concentration of water, which we have determined to be 55.5. If we cross multiply this and that, and this against one, remember that the K equilibrium will be K equilibrium divided by one. So we can cross multiply that, and then we are going to get this here. So the concentration of water times the K equilibrium. Now we know that uh, the concentration of hydrogen ion times the concentration of hydroxyl ion gives us what we call uh, the ionic product of water. So if we know the value of the ionic product of water, or we can then uh, get it, or if we know the value of the K equilibrium, in, in this case, then we can calculate for the ionic product of water. So the simplest thing to do is we can calculate, we, we can calculate from experimental data the value of the K equilibrium. So I don't know what happened. Let me get back to sharing. So I have no idea what what happened. Just started loading. I hope I'm I'm audible again. So I was saying that the value of the K equilibrium um, at 25 degrees Celsius is calculated to be 1.8 times 10 to the minus 16 molar. So if we substitute this into the the equation, remember earlier on we have this here. So we substitute. Um, the value of the K equilibrium, which is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 16 uh, molar into the equation. So what we are going to get is a product, which is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14 molar squared. Why molar squared? We have uh, M there and M there for molar. So we have molar squared. So when there are exactly equal concentration of hydrogen um, ion and also hydroxyl ion, as in pure water, the solution is said to be at neutral pH. So at this pH, the concentration of hydrogen ions and hydroxyl ions can be calculated from the ionic product of water. And what you do is basically just to introduce a square root this side and the square root that side. So what you're going to have is uh, the concentration of uh, water, I mean the concentration of hydroxyl ions or the concentration of uh, hydrogen ions can be obtained using that 
that that formula on top there. Now, what this means is that if the concentration of hydrogen ions is equal to hydroxyl ions, then you can um, substitute the hydrogen ions or rather the hydroxyl ions for hydrogen ions. That's why here we've got the hydrogen ion squared. So the square uh, root of this and the square root of that gives us 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7, or if you like, 10 to the minus 7 molar. So the value of um, um, the hydroxyl ions and also the hydroxyl ions at pH 7 um, is 10 to the minus 7. Now remember that uh, we are saying uh, neutral pH is pH 7. So neutral pH is not zero, it's pH 7. And the concentration of hydroxyl ions and also hydrogen ions at pH 7 is equal to 10 to the minus 7. So that is how the calculation for the hydroxyl ions and also the hydrogen ions was done. Let's come to the concept of pH. What is pH? So we are saying pH is the negative log of the concentration of hydrogen ions. We also have um, what is known as POH. So POH is also the negative log of hydroxyl ion concentration. So um, when you write the square brackets, like the way we have written them here, this means concentration. So if you're writing concentration, you put um, the compound or the radical in square brackets. So a low pH characterizes an acidic solution and a high pH denotes a basic solution. The total hydrogen ion concentration from all sources is experimentally measurable and is expressed as the pH of the solution. So the ionic product of water, KW, is the basis for the pH scale. Um, um, so point or bullet number two uh, is very important for us to understand. If you have got two substances in, um, in, in, in water, or if you have got a substance that is dissolved in water, assuming that the substance ionizes in water, it is also important to account for the fact that water also is able to ionize. So it is the total hydrogen ion concentration from the water and from that substance that you have to use to calculate the pH. So what then is the significance of pH? Uh, measurement of pH is very important um, in biochemistry and it's one of the most commonly uh, used procedures. So in, in, in uh, in the biochemistry labs, at, at, for example, at hospitals, uh, pH is used as a determinant of certain uh, ailments or diseases, because we know that pH affects the structure and activity of biological molecules. Uh, for example, the catalytic activity of enzymes is strongly dependent on pH. So any alterations uh, in the uh, pH values uh, in blood or in, in tissues will ultimately mean that the catalytic function of certain enzymes that are resident in such a portion are highly affected. And any deviation from, from normality actually is what we call a disease. So measurements of pH of blood and urine are commonly used in medical diagnosis. So if, if the pH is measured and it's found to be too high or too low, uh, then that can be used as 
a tool to diagnose a particular disease. So for example, the pH of blood plasma of people with severe and controlled diabetes, for example, is often below the normal value of 7.4. And this condition is called acidosis. So in an event where you go to the hospital, they do your pH values, they find maybe they are too low, like 4.4 or 5.5. That is a highly acidic blood plasma. So immediately they will know that you have what is called acidosis, but you can also actually connect and say that, you know, if this person has got uh, this acidosis, it's most probably, uh, it's, it's most probable that they actually have diabetes mellitus. In other certain diseases, um, the pH of the blood is very high than normal. And in this case, the condition is called alkalosis. So the chemical reactions of life constantly produce acids and bases within cells. And this is very important for us to, to appreciate that, um, you know, um, this acidosis or this alkalosis uh, can be um, as a result of uh, inability of the cells or the living system uh, to get rid of these excess acids or bases. Because some people ask to say, but where does this acidity or this alkalosis come from? We know that we are always eating food substances and these substances are broken down they are built up. So during these reactions, there are certain acids, there are certain bases that are produced that tend to throw off the pH values um, uh, beyond what the, what the normal is. So we need some sort of mechanism to minimize how much this pH is altered. And in most cases, the physiological systems uh, bring in a concept which we call buffering. So before we talk about buffers, I did put up some uh, questions that are related to pH. Um, uh, because of the fact that I use uh, almost the same notes, uh, you may have gone through, um, for those that have the, the, the notes, you may have gone through and seen how the calculations are done. But if you are given a question like this, what is the concentration of the hydroxyl ion uh, in a solution with the hydrogen ion concentration of 1.3 times 10 to the minus four molar? So um, I want to twist this question um, and say, what is the concentration um, of hydrogen ions where there is OH, put hydrogen ions in a solution with a hydroxyl ion concentration of 1.3 times 10 to the minus four molar. What is the concentration of hydrogen ions in a solution with a hydroxyl ion concentration of 1.3 times 10 to the minus four molar? So I, I want you to give me the answer in the next one minute. In the next one minute. Um, get your calculator and give me the the answer in one minute. So I'm allowing you to unmute yourself. If you have the answer, you can you can tell us what what the procedure you have used is. Just briefly. All right, thank you. So for this, um, 
for this question, question number three, um, it's important to understand that um, the hydroxyl ions comes from two sources, potassium hydroxide and also water. Now, since pH is determined by the total hydroxide ion or hydroxyl ions, um, or rather hydrogen ions, it's important to consider both sources. So in this case, we are considering the source of the hydroxyl ion. Uh, in case A, the distribution of water to total um, hydroxyl ion is negligible. Okay, the same cannot be said for the second case. Now, uh, usually it's difficult to make people understand the, the difference here. But let me try to labor to explain. So if you have um, um, zero, uh, let me do the text. So if you have uh, 2.0, uh, 2.0, times 10 to the minus two. Okay, this is the same as 0 0.02, I guess. Oh, oh Lord, I'm running out of time. Okay, so that is 0 0.02, okay? Now this is coming from potassium hydroxide. What is the concentration of hydroxyl ions from water? Okay, so the concentration from water of uh, OH ions is 10 to the minus seven, if you recall at neutral pH. Okay, so 10 minus seven. 10 minus seven is the same as 0 0.00000. One, two, three, four, five, and one, like that, okay? So you would see that if you were to add the concentration of hydroxyl ions from potassium hydroxide and the concentration of hydroxyl ions from water, this value here does not add so much. Uh, to the final concentration, this one here, okay? Because it's too negligible. You have got 0 0.02, okay? So 0 0.02 at this position here, that is 0 0.02. But you have 0, 0.0, so you have 0 0.02000001. Even if you were to include this concentration, it will be negligible. negligible, like that. Okay. So that is why in case number one, we do not use it. But check, for the second one, the concentration of potassium hydroxide um, is 2.0 uh, times 10 to the minus six, okay? Uh, if we write this according to our grade seven, uh, then that will be 0 0.000001. So that is one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that is six. Then the concentration of hydroxyl ions from water is still 10 to the minus seven, 10 to the minus seven. So this will be equal to 0 0.000000. Oh, this is definitely wrong. Okay, so instead of 0 0.01, that is 0 0.000001, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 2. We've got a 2 there. Then for this one, Jesus. Okay, let me just undo this. So for potassium hydroxide, I said that is 
zero two point zero times ten to the minus six. So we're saying that is equal to zero point zero 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 and two like that. From water, <coughs> uh, that is 10 to the minus 7 still, which is equal to 0 0.000001. Um, if you were to add, if you are to add, if you are to add this, Jesus Christ. So if you are to add this and that, we say plus, you get a value that is more relatable. So you are going to have 0 0.000021. So you can see that there's a huge difference uh, between the two, between the two. So this is significant than getting 0 0.0, um, than getting 0 0.0002 uh, and then the one is very far. Something like that. Okay, so this is very insignificant. This is very significant. So that is why for case number two, we are able to include the concentration of water. So here um, we are including a contribution, contribution of the OH from water. But here, not included because it's very insignificant. Okay, so it's important that when you are given, um, um, when you are given, um, what's this? When you are given uh, different concentrations, you have to consider the contribution of. Uh, either the OH or the hydroxyl ions uh, also from, from water. So I did endeavor to solve these questions um, within the text. Um, I, I put screenshots there. You can read and see um, the meaning of that. Um, unless there are any questions, then... Um, we can end our session here. Are there questions on what we've done? Um, let me just unmute.